So for probably about like, I don't know, the last three hours, I have felt like God was like, you know, kind of tapping me on the shoulder, like, I want you to do a video. And I'm like, all right. We can't live without that. Thank God, thank God that my town has a bell twice a day to let us quaint little town folk know that it is time for us to eat. What would we do? What would we do without that? Thank you, Lord God, for that. You know what I do appreciate, though? I do appreciate, like, this is insane, okay? I've got. I've just got to tell you guys this real fast. I'm sorry. I have to get this off my chest. You can fast forward through this part if you want. But what annoys me about that is that it's super loud. But what what blesses me now is that it used to be like 30 seconds long. I am not kidding. And so I think they shortened it to like 15 seconds, which at least they did that, right? Okay, anyways. Thank you, Lord. I just pray that you would help me to calm down. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> wow. Ask and you shall receive. <coughs> Thank God I didn't swallow this breath saver whole. I would be like, literally, I'd have to holler at one of my daughters to come in and give me the Heimlich maneuver. That'd be quite the interesting sight to see. Okay, anyways, so, so I'm all like, God, what am I going to do a video on today, right? And he reminded me that I needed to look a few things up. Last night, I had the craziest dream. And um, and so I, I woke up and I knew that I needed to write it down. Like I knew that there, it was a spiritual warfare dream. So there were demonic elements, there were witchcraft elements, but there was also elements in which um, I was casting a demons out of a person. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over my YouTube channel and over all who watch this. And I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over myself and over my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over each and every person that has a pure heart that watches me. I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over their destinies as well. And I thank you that no one will be able to swap destinies or steal our destiny in Jesus mighty name, because God, it is protected by you. I decree and I declare in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so brief synopsis of this dream. Okay. So I'm cooking supper and in this place. And all of a sudden this place changes. It, I was cooking supper for my mom and I, but I was so hungry. I just remember in the dream, I was so hungry. And I wanted some protein, like I wanted like some meat. And like one of the things that I cooked was chicken. And I kind of ate my chicken down. It didn't have a lot of meat on it. And so I wanted more. And I gave my mom the rest of the meal, which was, I think, mashed potatoes and asparagus. The, where we were at changed. And all of a sudden, I was in my grandparents' basement. Well, both of my grandparents that I was very close to on my mom's side have passed away. But they had a huge impact on our family. So I go upstairs thinking to myself, because my grandma, you guys, my grandma Albin was basically a superhero. I mean, she really was. I do not know how that woman had the energy that she did, but she was a Proverbs 31 woman if I ever knew one. Because not only did she have a heart of gold, not only did she have a generous heart, 
not only could you talk to her, and she wasn't perfect. She was not perfect. But she worked her butt off. The house was always spick and span. And she always had like a several course meal on the table. She always wanted me to, to sew and to cook and to do. And I learned a lot from my grandma. But anyway, so I'm headed up the stairs, okay? Because I'm thinking grandma will have some meat for me for left over from supper last night. I know my grandma, I know that she will. So I get upstairs and I'm, I'm, I'm realizing that it's like two or 3 AM and my grandparents are asleep and I need to be quiet. I didn't want to wake them up. So I was kind of hiding. I heard my grandpa talking and telling my grandma that somebody was in the house. And I figured, you know, I probably better show myself so I don't accidentally get shot or something. So I did. I stepped out and said, guys, it's me. And my grandpa acknowledged me. And anyway, so I got to talking with them for a little while and I was praying. And I don't remember at what point these two women came into the picture, but it was like they were drawn to me because I was praying and they had seen that my prayers were being answered. And so one of them, I remember, was really pretty, and I connected with her. I clicked with her very much, but I didn't know her very well. And I just remember that her name was Jacqueline, okay? And the other one, I didn't know. And she was a lot more heavy set. I didn't know her name. Um... But anyway, they were following me around and I thought that they were my friends, right? So we go back, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, I've got to go get my mom because I mean, like I've spent all this time visiting with my grandma and I, I'm, I'm supposed to be like eating supper with my mom. So I go to go back downstairs. My mom is already headed up the stairs. You know, she had a baby. Like I don't, this doesn't even make any sense, but all of a sudden she had a baby, right? And this baby, like this toddler, had dropped all of her food down the steps. And this baby, it was weird. I picked up this baby and like I was kind of, you know, gently scolding them like, you know better than to drop Nana's food, you know, just kind of like. But it was weird because this baby understood everything that I was saying and was like really getting into it. I mean, I, I knew that this baby could understand me. Like there's certain things in prophetic dreams that you just know. It's like, you know that somebody is understanding. It's weird. I, it's hard to explain. But anyway, we get downstairs. My mom it comes back downstairs and I'm like, mom, where's my plate? And she opens this refrigerator and instead hands me a drink. Well, the heavier set lady, the one I didn't know her name, takes it from me and proceeds to spit on the top of it. And I remember in the dream, I mean, in real life, I, I would be like disgusted and I would be mad and I'd be like, what are you doing? And I would realize that this person isn't my friend. But in the dream, I was kind of like, it's fine. You know, like I, I think like it was like I was an immature Christian. It was like me many years ago when I was still trying to like be a people pleaser and, um, like I, and I just was so desperate for friends that it was like, I would just put up with anything anyway. <laughs> that's not me now, <laughs> but in this dream, it was like, um, thank God there was a lid on the top of my drink. So she was not able to spit in it. So anyway, um, I, I'm like still hungry. Right. So I go back upstairs and I remember grandma has got like a full course meal upstairs and she's got meat, like she's got like steak. And so I'm excited about that. Right. Well, grandma had saved some of my food, but somebody had gotten into some of it. And so there was only a little bit left and there was my steak and then there was dessert. And I was really excited to eat this. Right. 
I go back upstairs. And as I'm on my way, um, as soon as I get up the stairs, this guy comes into the house and he begins to descend the staircase. And God just gave me the knowledge that this man, he was like, he acted slow. He acted like uh, mentally slow, but God gave me the knowledge that he needed to be set free from several demons. Like, and I began to bind and rebuke demons out of this man. And I could, I could see them manifesting. And so God gave me the knowledge as to what they were. And I remember calling out a deaf and dumb spirit. And then I also remember calling out a spirit of sexual perversion. And I called out two more. Okay, I said, by the count of three, if you still have demons in you, you will have to um, admit what they are or you Sir, if you have been delivered, you will tell me your name. And the man, I could, it was weird because my vision had been blurred and I couldn't see him. But he said, my name is Oren. And he was like talking to me, like in his right mind. I, I think I wasn't sure in the dream. So anyway, I get upstairs Grandma has got steak for me, but it is like somebody has been eating on it. And so there's not like it's not as much as she had before, but she had dessert. So I was really excited. Well, I go to take a bite out of this steak. And in real life, I recently had to get a tooth extracted and it's made eating difficult. And so in real life, I probably wouldn't have been able to really gnaw on a tough steak. <laughs> but in the dream, that's how it was. But it was like when I took a bite, I began to get extremely lethargic. And then I woke up. So what God gave me in that was obviously there was witchcraft in the dream with the two women that were following me around acting like my friends. And see, this is crazy because I looked up, I knew as soon like as God, I woke up, I knew that God wanted me to look up. Now I forgot to do this until just now, until just before I, I was like, God, what do I, what should I do my video on? And he's like, remember the names that you had in those dreams? I want you to look those names up. And I'm like, okay, well then I'm going to do my video about that dream. And so I looked up the name Jacqueline, and I'm just going to read this to you guys. This blew me away, okay? So this is what the name Jacqueline means. Ja the name Jacqueline is a French name that means supplanter and refers to someone who takes the place of another person by force or strategy, Jacqueline is a feminine form of Jacques and Jacob and has Hebrew roots. That's no accident. That's no accident. So we know that in the Bible, Jacob, that we had Jacob and we had Esau. And even though Jacob was the supplanter, and he stole Esau's birthright. We know that Esau was a sellout because he basically gave up his birthright for a bowl of soup. And we know that Jacob probably didn't go about it the right way to begin with, right? But he became a righteous man through the things that he went through in his life. He began to choose God and choose to be obedient to God over and over. Now, it's not to say 
that Jacob didn't make any mistakes, but he wrestled with God. He prevailed with God and he became Israel. Okay, so that's interesting. So I think now that I'm sitting here breaking this down, I think that it may have multiple meanings. I'm not completely 100% sure because I know that uh, another detail I forgot was that Jacqueline in the dream, like I had thought that she was my friend, but like um, right after I performed the deliverance on the man Oren, um, I heard her mocking, like she said, my demon of sexual perversion. She started to kind of mock me. And yeah, so, but then the other, so it could be, and this could be for you too, because a lot of the times God, I've noticed that the people that you are drawn to and the people who are drawn to you, it's like you're in the trenches together. It's like you're in the same kind of seasons together, or even if you're not, like, even if like, let's say I am in my wilderness season, but you are in the season where you're getting ready to cross over into your promised land, I can still give you wisdom and I can still bless you, even though I might be in a different season. But God will still kind of have us in the trenches together. But uh, I've noticed more often than not that the people who are, you are particularly drawn to, that you, you know, really look up to, it's like, you go, you go through things together. It's like you're in the same class almost. It's, it's, it's interesting. Well, I said all that to say this, that, um, this, I'm sharing this dream with you also because it may speak something to you that, it, it's not speaking to me. It may bless you in some way. You take what you need and leave the rest. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And so I, I want to also say here that I looked up the word Oren, um, the name Oren, and this is what it means. This is crazy. It means light or joy or sun. And it also means the spiritual combatant or the deity fighter. And okay. And I want to, I want to like the word deity is not capitalized. So it's not referring to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It means deity is in small God, like G God or goddess. So I think that's, that's how it's, ministering to me. I could be wrong, but that is what I'm taking from it. The origin of this is from Judaism. So it's also a Hebrew name or it has Hebrew roots. And I, you guys, I promise you that is not an accident. This is what God gave me after like, cause I don't have the full interpretation to this yet. And God may give me more of an interpretation. I asked him what it was. And it might be one of those dreams where I don't get the full interpretation until months or even years down the road. But I did get this. Okay. This is what I wrote down. I also remember and feel like the Lord spoke to me just now that even though my intentions in the dream were not completely pure because they weren't. I remember thinking in the dream, I want my friends, my new friends to be impressed with, you know, the fact that I can, I'm going to cast these demons out of this guy, right? I, I thought that like, and at one time I will admit that to you guys that I would have been like that. But now like I catch myself. If I start to think something like that, like it's like, really Lindsay, you know, because I want my intent. That's more important to me. My intent, my motivation being right with God than what anybody thinks. But at the time, yeah, that's, it was like my intentions were not exactly pure. 
And I, but I, and I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't. I, I had no idea. So I was just new to this, right? But God still moved through me, even though my intentions were not entirely pure. And even though, like, I didn't know what I was doing because I had faith that God would move through me and that God would use me. He did. Okay. And I cast these demons out. Um, because, and okay. Yeah. And afterwards I was extremely drained and I was craving meat. And that reminds me if you guys, um, remember, or if you watched it, if you didn't, I highly recommend that you do sometime when you have extra time, because it'll take you a while, but I did a series on a book called He Came to Set the Captives Free. And um, in one of the videos, Rebecca Brown talks about how important it is to have a good diet of protein when you are dealing in spiritual warfare because it drains you. And it did. And I, this is another thing that I want to caution you against if you are ever in a dream and somebody random shows up like happened in my dream and you remember it, I mean, thankfully God woke me up and the lady, remember the lady that tried to spit in my drink, there was a lid on it all of a sudden. So God had me protected. And as soon as I started to get lethargic, I woke up. So God had my back. And so if you are not aware of something in a dream, God will have your back. Like, if you're walking with him and you, you know, are staying connected to him, you know, like praying and just, you know, and, and even if you're not, even if your walk isn't perfect, but you, you got, you know, you're trying to go after the Lord, you know, God's got your back. And so even if your ducks aren't all completely in a row, God's grace is awesome. And his power is made perfect in weakness. And so anyway, um, I wanted to pass that along to you guys. And I also wanted to say uh, that if somebody is ever, if like shows up in a dream like that, that you don't know and wants you to eat something, do not do it. Because it is probably a witch that is trying to get you to come into agreement with something probably trying to get you into some kind of a demonic contract. And just the fact that the name Jacqueline means somebody who is trying to steal like the destiny, someone who tries to take the place of another by force or strategy. Okay. And so the fact that she didn't give me the food, but that other chick tried to spit in my drink. And I'm not sure where Jacqueline and this other chick were when I was trying to cast the demon out of Orin. So who knows what they, and, and remember, remember you guys, when I went back to my food to get it from my grandma, it had been, some of it had been eaten. I'm just saying. So it's like, Witches, they can get in, they can astral project themselves into your dream. And one of the ways that they get you to come into agreement with some kind of a demonic contract or maybe even try to swap your destiny or steal your destiny is by here, eat this food or drink this drink that I have given you. And so I want to pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke and bind and cast out any demonic contracts or anything that I might have come into agreement with unknowingly in that dream. I decree and declare that no weapon formed against me or the people who watch me that are going after you, God, will prosper. And I pray for those who watch me that God should this happen to one, one of them in a dream, that Lord, you would make them very aware 
And I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over my mind and over theirs as well. And I thank you, God, for just making us so highly aware of what is going on while we are sleeping. That's when the enemy likes to attack. That's when witches and warlocks like to attack is in our sleep because it's where, when we're at our most vulnerable state, which is super chicken poop of them. But hey, I mean, like, okay. Uh, wow. Anyway, God bless you all. I love you all very much. And I truly hope that this has blessed you. I hope it's blessed you in some way. Like I said, take what you need and leave the rest. So as always, I love you, God bless you, and I will see you in the next video.